keep the commission meeting in order. Commissioner Trump, the pledge, the pledge, the pledge, the pledge, the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First item on the agenda, we have the first reading of Ordinance 117. Schenkel rezone. Yes, to rezone from Ag Preservation to Mini Ag is Lot 2, Schenkel Second Subdivision in the East Half, East Half 35122261, and Lot 1, Schenkel Third Subdivision, South Half, Southwest 36122261. The addresses are 14187 and 14184, 405th Avenue. Move it. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Hanson to approve the first reading of Ordinance 117, Schenkel Rezone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have Ordinance 118, the first reading of the Schuster Rezone. This is also from Ag Preservation to Mini Ag. It's lots 127 and 7 through 8 of Camelot Subdivision, and lot 5 of Sperry First Subdivision of Camelot Subdivision. In southeast of 19, 12362, the address, um, I don't have individual ones, but they're on Ferry Lane Road. I'll move it. Second. That's right, south of the bath corner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Moved by Hishback, second by Kipley. All in favor of first reading of the Ordinance 118, choose to rezone. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Claims and payroll? Move. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Hanson. Approved claims and payroll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. HR report. Move. Move. Second. Moved by Fishback, second by Hanson to approve the HR report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, sheriff's report for April. Move. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Sutton to approve the sheriff's report for April 2018. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Auditor's report of account. Move. Second. Moved by Hanson, second by Kipley to approve the audit report of account. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Fair contracts. Moved. Second. Moved by Fishback, second by Sutton to approve the fair contracts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next item on the agenda, we have Ron Kramer to discuss illegal dumping citation. Is Ron here? Mr. Kramer? Yes. Come on in. Thank you. Good morning. 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 Guilty. I came here from Minnesota and actually I worked with law enforcement for about 25 years. I worked with the drug task force in Mocha County. And anyways, yeah, I'm used to chasing bad guys and uh, for the last few years I've been coming here visiting a, an elderly friend of mine. I'm getting old, but well, he's 88, so he's got me by a few years, but uh, I really like this town, and I, I told myself if I ever uh, decide to retire, I'd, I'd like to come here because the people, you know, are so <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what a way to make an uh, 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 impression in town, and then the worst of it is, um, you know, I, I think I'm very fortunate to know some really good people in town, like Pete and Terry from the Hitchin Post, but anyways, in fact, that was his trailer that I used that day, but um, <laughs> across the street from me, um, kind of thinking his name, he's been, uh, been around, I guess, for a long time, uh, Wayne Fisher. He's like the most 
I mean, I, I'm not used to it. When I moved here or came here from Minnesota, I, I kind of lived out in the farmlands for, for a while, you know. We park our truck right next to the front door, you know. But anyways, he's so meticulous. I look at him, they're out there, they're blowing. I'm like, why are they blowing like dust off their driveway? And they, you know, if there's one leaf on the ground in that neighborhood, it's got to get picked up, you know. So then when I got this, I said, Wayne, I got to talk to you. You're not going to believe it. I said, I dumped some stuff at this place. Wasn't supposed to, have, you know. I said, I did it three times. He goes, <laughs> I didn't see it was a trailer. I said, no, I helped this lady move. She had to get out of her apartment. And, or anyways, but, uh, yeah, totally guilty. Had, and uh, the crazy thing about it is, I remember one of the guys, I had hired a couple of young kids to help out, you know. And one of my, now that I think about it, I said, well, you know, they have cameras out here. <laughs> what? Well, you're, you're helping me move this stuff. I... I wasn't doing that good for, I'd, I'd been doing some doctoring and stuff, so I was just kind of like the driver, you know, and they did all the work because I was, I'm, you know, going to haul furniture around and dump this stuff, but um, I'm totally guilty. I had no idea, you know, I was just racing like a wild man. We were trying to get as many loads as we could over there to, to dump, you know, and uh, so I talked to Wayne and, and, and uh, my gentleman, friend, or my friend here in town, and he goes, yeah, there's a big sign. Or when you when you pull in, you know, I said, oh, God, I don't read these signs. I didn't even know where the heck I was, <laughs> you know. What kinds of stuff were we dumping? Was it furniture? House, just, uh, not really furniture, mostly households. Well, whatever she had in her house that she didn't want. Cabinet, you know. chairs. So some houses, Well, there was all kinds of crap, miscellaneous, everything you could think of. I think she was kind of a, what do you call that? Order. That sort. Yeah, because it didn't seem like it ever got empty, you know. <laughs> and, but anyway, I did indeed. I was the driver, and, and uh, I, I, I'm i guilty. You know, I just didn't know, you know, have, you're have from, a clue. You say you're from Minnesota? Yeah. Find the double. Oh, no! <laughs> 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 I'll testify against that. <laughs> well, it's funny, because, well, it's not funny, but the officer that came out to our house, you know, uh, his name was Ben Smith, from County Officer. Anyways, so he says, knocks at the door, he says, um, Ron Kramer, go, yep, I'm Ron. He says, come on, so, could you come outside and want to talk to you? He goes, holy crap, what did I do, you know? <laughs> and uh, so he says, well, Ron, did you dump some stuff at uh, this place? And I said, yeah. I said, I, I dumped a bunch of stuff. I said, I think I made like three or four runs out there dumping stuff, you know? Well, some of the stuff that got dumped, you're not supposed to dump there, and it was all oh, great, you know. And uh, so he, it was you, and I said, yeah. So he's got in his hand pictures of my truck. And it was funny because, well, it wasn't funny, but here's my big red truck in the driveway. He's got this, I don't know, four or five pictures of my truck. So was this your wheel? No, no. <laughs> I said, that's the best pictures I've ever had on my truck. I said, you guys have good cameras. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I, I did it. I didn't know I was, you know, doing that. I was just trying to help somebody out. But I'm guilty. So whatever I have to pay, I have to pay, you know. Well, and it's it's extra work for our landfill people. We have to send people out to pick that stuff up. That's right what there. I heard, Dan. Yeah. I totally understand and that. People don't realize that that's the extra expense for us to have to do it and sure and people uh, you know uh, like you said I can understand you being from Minnesota not being familiar with the area but we have a lot of people that are local that that dump illegally to that oh okay they end up with fines all sure time. well I I think it's you know it's good that you have cameras out there and you watch people I don't even like people flicking their cigarettes out their window you know I'm <laughs> being a litter bug and here I find out I'm like a giant big bug dumping crap all over the place so not a real good way to make an introduction to the town, but here I am. <laughs> well, we appreciate your understanding and welcome yeah. to Aberdeen. You know, thank you, thank we're you. We're still pretty good people. Oh my gosh, yes. I, in fact, I just recently made the decision I am formally going to become a part of this community. So I have to go later, back. Once you learn the rules. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that was kind of confusing in this town was the, the, the roads. Yeah, but like a lot of one, you know, like I was going down, I mean, I had to back up, I don't know how many times I'd be going down the road, and next thing I know, 
one way. Oh, oh geez, I'm going the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you really got to be alert in the sound one because you can end up going the wrong way on a, if you're not real familiar, right? You know? Yeah, exactly. And it's gotten better. We used to have more. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you don't probably want the Aberdeen Police Department knocking on your door next. <laughs> well, actually, I, you know what, I, I almost applied for, for a job as an investigator working with the Drug Task Force here. I talked to one officer, and uh, he says, yeah, I said, oh, but I'm getting kind of old. He said, oh, we like old people. <laughs> <laughs> we well, always ask the Mexican help with the landfill if you want to help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously, I'm, a, I'm an expert at it. I want a more than minimum base wage, I'll tell you that. Yeah. And you know what to watch for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate your good sense of humor about it. And, uh, well, what are you going to do? I screwed up. You all it make me more alert in my older age now. That, but uh, yeah, at some point I, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I might be doing some work for for you guys. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Everybody I've met, few officers that I met, and in fact, that gentleman that gave me my paperwork. Ben, he, uh, his dad, Small World, graduated with me in Minnesota, it was called Coon Rapids, Minnesota, a suburb of Minneapolis, mm -hmm. St. Paul, you know. Um, and he, I did some undercover work in Circle Pines for a while. Anyways, he it went to the house and he used to live there. I go, oh my God, this is crazy. I just was at the Dan's Leather Shop and both those guys are from Circle Pines, Minnesota. Small World. We all lived at, or, we were, well, I was located at different areas, depending on what I was doing, but, yeah, it's, it's a small world, but the people, it's a, such a, it's it's a slower pace here, and the people have different, different attitudes here. Okay. And we don't have state <laughs> income tax, which helps. Oh, retiree. thank you so much. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, I, uh, I apologize for, for doing that, and I'll be a little bit more alert. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. And thanks for coming in. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Should I just have to, do I send in a check or how do I do this? You can pay the treasurer's office at the end of here if you want to take care of it today or. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's, that's up to you. Whatever you how your budget works and how you feel that you want to take care of it. But yeah, I just want to take care of it. Then you know I want. To I believe it's the treasurer, right? She go and pay the treasurer's office. Okay. All right. That's it. My kids. In charge of the landscape, Mike Scott. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. You got a strong head I'm still rusty if you had that. Hey, we'll get even down the road. You know where that's from. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
wishing that we still had Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so I think exactly. it'll make, it make that group happy and and uh, save us a lot of money. So all the contracts are there <coughs> signed. So if you just authorize mm -hmm. Doug to sign those, we should do. Be we set. Uh, need to make a motion for making sure we understand that it's 55 percent. Correct. I'll make a motion that we go with Walmart for the upcoming year, starting July 1st and raise the co-pay that the uh, county pays to 55% for the family, for the family uh, policy. I'll second it. Well, uh, motion by Sutton, second by Hanson to approve the Wellmark uh, plan for starting June 1st of 2018. Did your 71,260 should include the updating of the family already? Yes. Okay. I still say that. Yeah. It's July 1 starts, right? I know there were some concerns about the people that have met their deductible, but regardless whether we stay with Medica or go with Walmart, the new year, the new plan year begins July 1st. Their so deductibles start over July exactly. 1st. Exactly. Anyway, so so it it's not going to affect people's deductibles I'll need the negatively. Oh, I'm the Walmart. I think I've got a sheet here for you. There. I've got a sheet but it doesn't say which plan you're going for for the employee. Well, age. it's just the base plan, and if they want to buy up, that'd be up to them at that okay. point, right. just like the other plan was. Okay. I'll include that in my motion, that, was, that is the base plan based on the quotes okay. that we got. <laughs> and kudos to you, Chairman Feldheim, for crunching those numbers. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't you too that. hard, but, but we have a the motion was by Sutton and a second by Hanson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It's pretty easy this year. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice when you don't have to contend with a large increase. First time I can yeah. remember. Yeah. And a few years. Next item on the agenda, we have Dustin Topol discuss the joint three mile jurisdiction around the city of Aberdeen. Yeah. Yeah. Got a one -way. Thank you. Good morning. Good How are you guys? Oh, I got the, the box. Yeah, you guys get the hot seat. <laughs> 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 How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Well, well, she'll begin, I guess, <laughs> the easiest way. She's got a whole list. <laughs> um. So um, we're talking about the property on 133rd Avenue, which is seven acres we bought in January 2015. We purchased the property. We prior to purchasing the property, we inquired about um, if we would be able to put a mobile home on it, and we were left with the impression that we would be able to. Um, after the purchase, and um, we began the process of getting everything ready to move. We were informed of a three-mile uh, boundary of the city. When we went to the city, they said that we could not have the mobile home on the property. And um, the property directly to the east of us had a mobile home on it. We shared the property line. And they said that it was governed in, but when we spoke to the owner of that trailer, he said that it was not governed in. He was actually told after he moved it out there he couldn't have it there, and he said, well, oh, well, it's here, and nobody ever did anything about it, so it was there after that. <laughs> so um, we went back to the county, um, and at that point, they didn't want to get involved, which I understand, since the city already <coughs> had known, they didn't want to be the back and forth. Um, so we again went back to the city, and the employee stated that under no circumstances he was going to allow a mobile home on the property because it depreciates the value of the properties around it. Um, with our neighboring properties. Nobody had an issue with us putting a mobile home on the property. Um, and um, so we just took a picture of a mobile home um, just around the area. Um, I think it looks fine. Um, this is a house that I feel like this could depreciate your property, but it's a house. It's in the city limits. In the city limits. Um, and then this is also a picture of a governor's house, and this is a picture of a mobile home. And I don't feel that there's much difference aesthetically between the two that would depreciate a property's value. Um, uh, we tried a few times um, talking with the city to try and see what we could do about putting a 
global home out there, but uh, we were unable to and eventually just gave up. We uh, then went to zoning for a 10 by 12 uh, um, storage unit to be put out there so that we could clean up and maintain the property out there. Um, it was hard to haul a lot more than all that stuff back and forth from our residents in town out to the seven acres. Um, when I submitted the site plan and the paperwork to go to zoning for the shed, the gentleman that I talked to, which was a different person than we had been working with on the mobile home, said he didn't see any issues. He felt like it would be very easy for us to get approval through zoning. When we went to zoning, the gentleman that was there representing the city um, put in to deny us to have the shed out there. Um, and then after a lengthy debate, we were able to get permission for two years to have a shed out there, but we had to start building within the two years. And uh, um, we had to keep everything that we had on the seven acre property to maintain it inside of the shed. So it's kind of hard to keep that much equipment inside a 10 by 12 shed, but we did our best um, to follow those rules. Um, this is a property just not far from us and they have lots of things that are not contained within buildings or sheds or anything like that. Um, so I felt like that was kind of an unfair stipulation that they did put on us, but we did still try to abide by it. Um, we were um, unable to start building after the two years. Um, so almost two years to the day, the same gentleman um, contacted us and said we had to remove the shed from the property. Uh, we uh, inquired with the city about building a pole barn, which they said we couldn't do unless there was a living quarters there. So now we had all this equipment, no place to put it. So we ended up having to remove the shed and then buy a trailer to then put the equipment into. Um, so all of this is causing a lot of financial hardship. Uh, the property, property directly to the east of us, um, that property had that had the trailer on it, had been purchased, and the trailer was tore down, and um, a pole barn still remains on there, but they also have not started building, so they just have a pole barn with no living quarters and nothing on the property, just the pole barn. Um, and then in the summer of 2017, a trailer was moved on to a property within the three-mile buffer, which was approved by the city only by a site plan and they, did, they were not required to go to zoning. Um, so this is the mobile home that was moved on um, within the three mile boundary. And um, so this is the three mile boundary and that's where the mobile home is located, that they did not have to seek any additional permission to put it out there and that was after we had inquired about ours. Um, let's see. So you're feeling like these rules are kind of applied randomly? Yep. Yes. Um, so it's like a pick and choose type deal. Pick on you and choose somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So is there so is that ordinance? Why can't they have a mobile home? It's like, yeah, for mini A, that you can't have. Okay, so it's zoned mini, the seven it's is It's zoned mini A, that's what I was guessing. Yep, yep, it is. Well, it see, is when we, before we bought this property, we called and asked and said it is mini A. Mm. And they said, uh, yep, okay. that shouldn't be a problem. So we went ahead and I spent the money and oh. I did all this stuff and put water on it. Then when I come back to go to do it, nope, sorry. So I spent lots of money on this to do this. And then they turn around and say, mm -hmm. nope, no way. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, it appears that the city is picking and choosing what they want to enforce, and I just can't help but think it's based on who you are and not necessarily always the ordinances. Since the city is unable to enforce consistent ordinances in the three-mile buffer, as well as not provide fire and rescue police, water, sewer, garbage, and things like that, I'm not understanding why they get the deciding factor in what happens on those properties. So I guess I'm looking for what do we do to get approval um, or what do we need to do? Because uh, maintaining two properties is extremely difficult. Well, I guess first of all, the city resides over us on the three mile jurisdiction. We don't have a lot to say on it. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem fair, but that's yeah, that's that's where it's at, and uh, unless somebody has some other insight, Chris or Gary, I mean, that's always kind of been a problem for the three-mile zone or three-mile jurisdiction. Is the city dictates 
what happens in those three miles when actually you think you're out in the county. And so, real quick, Gary, does it matter if it's rezoned from an EA to yeah, as far as the tr mobile home, it does. Yeah, right so, but it's already, they said many eggs, so that's why a, a mobile home isn't allowed. So what's well, the what would they need to, sorry, I'm sorry, what would they need to rezone it to to, to allow a Well, mobile that's, home? it's based on the size and things, and so that's why it was rezoned, I'm sure, initially How many to many eggs. So there's it's nothing right else you could really zone okay. to, to change <laughs> yeah. to. We're going to be moving back to egg, the seven acres. Do you know why that other mobile home would have been allowed to move on um, just based off a site plan without even attending zoning or anything? Yeah, not off the top. I mean, I can't speak for them, but unless it was, uh, like you said, if it was done after the, after yours, it even, was. that seems very done in odd. 2017. It was done after oh, yours. Yeah. As you were told That's before, very strange. Yep. you were told before you moved it out there that you could do that. Yeah, we were left with the impression we may have to go to zoning, yeah, but they didn't feel that it would be. You might enough. talk to <coughs> planning and zoning here just to find out if there's other. We did talk to him. And he kind of said he. We did talk to him initially, and he just said after the city said no, he was just reluctant to get involved, being told you guys have to work together, and I get that. Well, it might matter though if you can rezone it to something <coughs> that the sure. city will then allow the mobile home to be. You can always apply to have a rezone. I mean, that's not. Yeah, but I don't think in this case you probably have much chance to rezone. But you can at least apply. Yeah, but okay. that's what that's what I w was going to ask is have you talked to oh, yeah. city council or or? Uh, yep, okay. I've talked to and we've been back and forth. So, from my understanding, the city can only enforce stuff out to one mile. So how can they enforce? Well, that's for the smaller cities. I think the larger ones can go to three miles. Well, code okay. enforcement's only up to one mile. It is. They, the, the zoning requirements are up to okay. three miles for the, for, for the city. Okay, can you, what's the difference between a manufactured home and a double one? That's a good question. Because they are built the same exact right. way. Right. They come in, the axles are removed. So and it's no different than you pulling it in yeah. on a house mover and setting it down doing the same thing. So I'd really like to know, sure, you know well, how I don't know what their definition is. So those things were those rules were made years ago yep. and, and things were different. Those things are all manufactured so much different now than they used to be. And that's where I've talked to like Centennial and I've asked and they said the only, there's really no difference other than you move it in on beams and they take that out. Right. Or you move it in underneath and it has axles, the axles come out, it sits, and same concept. It's 134th and what, Justin? Uh, 133rd is uh, ours. What's the address of it? 183, no, or uh, 3, 3, 8, 3, 8, 200, 33rd. 383? Yep, 383, 3, 8, 3, 200, or 3, 3, 20, 8, 100, 33. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, that, so if they were to, if they were to plot that in uh, two separate yeah, lots, just for Yep. Say namesake. Would that gain anything to rezone? Uh, From what I understand, no. It's right here. Yeah. Right there it is. It's outside that yellow line that <coughs> we were discussing last week. And you go to the city council right here. meeting at the meeting that in front of all of us. Oh, we've talked to them. Right. Right. Well, I think that's, that's where we are. struggled getting so the shed. And we brought it up during the time yeah. that we were trying to get the shed, and it was again. It now I it see was where it's from. Upon it. I just, I'm uh, having a hard time on it. It's 3rd and 134th, so it's got to be right there. Well, uh, that's my more next pressure on your own. See, I just don't, un we don't understand the whole deal because, like you Didn't said, Didn't they say 383? Uh, yeah, the address is they're three. closer to 384. Yeah, so they're quarter. over here then? Yep. Yeah. They're right here. Oh, this one right here. I can tell you what the definitions of our, in no. our ordinance, what manufactured no. home is this versus thing. mobile home. Right it ah. says for manufactured yes. home, it includes so the term there. mobile home and means a structure transportable in one or more sections, which is built on a permanent chassis and is designed for use with or without permanent foundation when connected to utilities. And then, 
The term also includes park or travel trailers or similar vehicles not to be there greater than 180 days. And then for mobile home, it says any occupied vehicle used or considered as to permit is being used as conveyance on public streets or highways and only licensed as such and shall include self-propelled or non-self-propelled vehicles so designed, constructed, non-constructed or added by means of <coughs> a closed addition or room mm -hmm. in such a manner as it will permit the occupancy therefore dwelling or sleep, sleeping place for more than one person, um, for one or more persons. Nothing in this definition shall be construed so as to include prefabricated, pre-cut residences or those manufactured in sections or parts away from the site and are transported thereto for erection. Provided that when completely erected, said prefabricated, pre-cut or manufactured residences shall be on permanent foundation and in all respects comply to the Uniform Building Code. So basically it just sounds the difference is mobile homes you can move at least initially in manufactured homes like you said. So there isn't much difference between the definitions. No, that's what I, it kills me because I said I'll even put a permanent foundation under this deal. And it's all... That doesn't resolve the issue? I, that would be my first thought. If yeah. you put a permanent foundation on you set it on a cement foundation, See, I would think that that would resolve the issue just in my mind, but yep. I... And that's where we've we've been around and I've done enough digging, well then we decided maybe we should look into this route and see, maybe you guys can tell us, who do I need to talk to, what do I need to do, I mean, I, like I said, I I went from having one bill, one loan bill, to multiple, now to keep up both properties, paying for everything, my taxes went up and nothing's changed on the property except for we went out and cleaned it all up, we maintain it, we mow it, we cut down the dead trees, and my taxes went up 750 bucks. They're getting penalized. So it's like, how am I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm just going downhill here. How, how long have you owned the property? It'll be since 2015. We purchased it in like November, December of 2014 and like took ownership. And of was that still within their three mile jurisdiction when you bought it or has that expanded since? Supposedly it's been there. But that's why before I bought it, you checked it. we called and asked, saying this is what we want to do, can we? Yep, that shouldn't be a problem. Five months later, four months later, we come in to do it. We get told, nope, no way. I feel like we just keep talking to the wrong person. I feel like I'm running, <laughs> chasing my tail. You're looking right. for the right person to give you the right yep. answer. <laughs> We're cool so I see you bought it November 14th. And it, like I said, I mean... It, it's now it's to the point I can't even I got a shed I had to buy a uh, enclosed trailer to put the stuff in just so I can keep the property up so that was another big expense on top of it and it just it seems like I said I'm just changing <coughs> my tail around and around was your intention to move out of town yep to the I grew up out of Bath and my little boy loves it out there and I keep telling him and he doesn't want us to sell it and it's like I'm just to the point it's Either I'm going to end up probably going down a bad hole where I'm going to end up having to file something because it's, if I can't sell it or I can't afford it, I mean, then my, now my everything I've worked for goes, Psh. I probably stuck $25,000 into this property since I bought it under the understanding hopefully we'd be able to do it. But, you know, it's when you say enough's enough, you... And I, that's my problem, is I don't want to live in the city anymore. I spent the money, I put the web water on it, I did all this stuff trying to get it to where I'm able to, <coughs> and now I'm sitting here going... Do you have anything in writing from them when you originally got the go-ahead to do it, or was it all verbal on the phone? It was all verbal on the phone. I just called and asked. And I wish, you know, now knowing, yeah. I should have came down and said... Hey, <coughs> Gary's, if they do put it on a permanent foundation, is that possible? You're Obviously, we can't speak for what but the you city is requiring. You've that after well, what they're telling I've you. I got it to them, and like I said, there's one guy, and I really, <laughs> I think he just has it out for us, honestly. 
You hate to say it, but it sure feels that Because way. <laughs> I sat up there, and it, like I said, you pick and choose this deal. And I was up there at one of the zoning meetings, and this guy came up, and he wanted to put his stuff. And they said, nope, you can't do it unless you concrete the whole thing. So the guy said, well, I'm just going to give it back to the guy. We're done. Not even two months later, there's another business sitting there. They got stuff sitting all over. They didn't make him do it. I think the best thing you can do is get in front of the city council and do exactly what you're doing here. I mean, the problem is I think the only answer we can give you is check with our uh, planning and zoning to see if it's possible to rezone. Is that the city planning and zoning again? Uh, the I would check with the county. First. He wants you to go in front of the city council meeting on Monday I'm night. Talking, I'm yeah. talking, yeah, Monday night city council meeting it's open. Right. I think Elisa handled that from American News, so it'll be somebody will be there. But it's just like this, but it's okay. the city. Um, that's the only way to do it. It really is. I mean, the city council needs to hear all of this if they haven't heard it. Okay. They probably haven't. Okay. Um, lay it out. And it's election time, so the sooner the better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll definitely uh, do find that out. When, who do I talk to about getting on there? Or if you just call yeah. the city office, yeah. they'll the <coughs> city office? start with the right people. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Mondays at 5 30. Okay, I appreciate it. I think Especially you have the fact that good information there to take along with you. I mean, that's why these folks are there to help you. Your research well, has been excellent. I did, like I said, I did my, a lot of my research. I talked to a lot of my neighbors and. They, I even talked to the township guy, and he yeah. says, I have no problem with you doing that. Yeah, we'd like to help you, too. Maybe the township guy could come with him, too. Then. That would be nice. I can, I'm that sure might give you a little leverage, too. Okay. Okay. Like okay. I said, the sooner the better. Election is when, Max? <laughs> June 5th. June 5th. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to find out here where I can get on. Okay. I appreciate you guys finding it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wish there was more we could do. Yeah. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, discuss FOB request procedure. You're, you're, everybody's probably wondering, what is this about? I happened to be here la uh, last Tuesday, sign of stuff after, and uh, the question has come up. The delivery people aren't real happy about going in the east door, going back out, going to the south door, coming back out, coming all the way around the building, and trying to deliver mail and, and that type of thing. So. His request was, is it possible I can get a FOB? And I says, I think that would be something that the judges would have to determine. I says, I surely can't determine that. And he also did state that he has a FOB for the federal building. They let him have a FOB to access the federal building. We're talking mail carrier. Same same guy all the time? Yep. And no, I don't no, know what no, your replacement. I mean, it can't be the same guy all yeah, the time. It can't well, be. Yeah. Monday through Friday? Because they'd have vacation and again. And I, I see the frustration of going in the building three different times and walking clear around the building delivering something because you can't get from there. You can't get from the middle over here. You gotta you gotta make three different attempts at it. Maybe you better talk to the judges because I think there have there been other requests too. Is there some kind of a request form that can well, First be? of all, I don't think it's up to the judges who get spots. You don't think? No. This is this is our building, well, and I think it's up to the commission who gets Bob. I think the bigger issue is, I, I, I don't know how he ha accesses the federal building, but if he's, I don't think he's delivering mail up to pass the security, I think he'd probably just drop it off there. He does come into my office, and he could never fob through anyways, we just bugged him in. He walks through, drops the mail off, goes out the back door, and then heads down the hallway towards the veteran's office. Um, so that door he wouldn't be able to get through. So maybe he could get you know, that one access is just that door. Then he gets through veterans, and then he'll be at security. And I presume Max has to get over to your end then. This, yeah, is, this has to be five too. He's got three separate entrances: east side, middle, and here. That's the only but the, the only entrance, entrance is out here, so it's not like. He can or the treasures, yeah. Right. If you walk all the way around the building for the second and third. Or have security following through the door that's 15 feet away. I mean, there's going to be security there. I can't well, imagine they couldn't do that. Or give them a fob. I mean, I think it's up to you. <coughs> and if the judges disagree, uh, we can certainly ask Judge Porter. I, I guess that was the... I, I said I would bring it up, and I, I guess the next question would be is do you have... 
you're talking mail carrier now, and what happens with FedEx and Speedies and, yeah, and, and UPS and uh, on, and on, on, on and on I it think, goes. So I, think, I, guess, I think the mail carrier has this routine route though, he's got the three stops, those uh, UPS and his other um, FedEx, they, they're all, I, I don't know, they come every day to UMAC? Well, we knew there was going to be inconveniences. Maybe we have one drop point. People got to, court's got to come get their mail. Sheriff's got to come get their mail. There's one spot where everybody's mail is dropped. Now you're talking people of disrupting county employees in the middle of something, which... Well, it's once a day, right? The mail. Other people doing it. I know. It's going to be... We knew there was going to be inconvenient for people. Well, I, I guess my first thought is, is the mail carrier is in a per se uniform. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's coming across and the security set up, I can't see why security can't fog him through the door. <coughs> that seems like a pretty logical situation to me, but I, I guess... Logic doesn't always work, though. <laughs> well, he's got an idea. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, at least they have uniforms, should have IDs. Anybody can get a uniform, but if you have the ID, that's what's going to... Somebody really wanted enough so they can get a uniform on eBay. Yeah, that's true. Typical, it's the same mail carrier all the time that runs the courthouse here. I mean, mm -hmm. as a majority of the time, I mean, yeah. we yeah, have the case. 95% of the time. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, I think you could do the easy thing and leave it up to security because Ultimately, they're in charge of security in the entire courthouse. <coughs> they can figure it out with the mail carrier when that time comes, May 21st, I believe. Like you said, FedEx and UPS should know where, which side they're going to, and should, that should be able to work that out. Well, it's a little different than mail. The mail's yeah. not at all. You know, FedEx might be just off of the sheriff that day. Mm -hmm. So, what, do we let it up to the security? board and Gary you want to sure I guess basically at this point in time I what do we just want to you know, question the mail delivery okay unless anybody else has anything no I mean I, I guess that was well if they have a question they can always bring it up like the mailman okay Sounds we'll good. pass on to the security board good luck <coughs> <coughs> Next item on the agenda, we have Mr. Dirk Rogers, right away for Northern Valley <coughs> Department Update. Howdy. Morning, Dirk. Do I already alienated fish back or what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I want one. There's some contracts in there. I got these in the mail the other day and I put them all down there and says Sweet. that's the highlight of everything that happened in South Dakota with the Department of Transportation. In the last hundred years? Well, <laughs> they can't go pamp with this big, huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how many roads we've gotten fixed, right? <laughs> and bridges replaced. <laughs> um, I have a right of way occupancy for Northern Valley. It's uh, out on the Hale Mile, or not the Hale Mile, the um, 13W up there. Yeah, is that thing called? Fordham Mile up there uh, between 281 and the old highway. East to me. Yeah, straight east. If you keep coming on Richmond Road, it's a mile get you over to the old highway. Uh, it's just an update. They're going to bore underneath the road there, updating the service that goes into that Willow Wood, Idle Wood Drive subdivision there. So there's no nothing major. I'm going to bore it. I'll move it. Second. Moved by Sutton, second by Kipley to approve the yes. right of way for uh, Northern Valley. <laughs> you bean counters like everything to be in pen, but. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anything else, Mr. Sir? Oh, we're just getting started. <laughs> we just having a good day. Well, you only, you only have a one whole department update, so that, that could be a while, huh? Give them uh, just a couple things we got going on. Um, we started the Road 14 project out there. The the roads closed basically at the railroad tracks. You can, you can get in there to RDO and stuff, but uh, 
the usual first day, you know, everybody's driving up in there and drive by four road close signs, and then they get up there and they start calling the highway shop. Well, can you move those signs down closer to US 12? I said, I got signs on US 12. They're out on the US highway, so. We gotta get brighter signs on it, this, the whole day has been like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we got that going out there, and then the next thing that's gonna happen out, that'll be about four or five weeks that that's gonna be closed now. Okay and that's mostly working right at the uh, railroad crossing and then a left turn lane for northbound traffic going into the uh, east side of the industrial park and then on the 21st which is next monday i believe we're going to start milling up at north of the water treatment plant so those three miles and we're going to actually going to mill it up twice we're going to go through once then we're going to hog in a whole bunch of our recycled concrete that we made in the backyard um, short haul not too bad uh, cost there so we'll haul that up there we'll put some natural on top of it I like to finish it with some natural then we're gonna mill it a second time and put some additives in there so you know it, it uh, I don't expect that to be more than a couple couple weeks of disruption and then it'll be maintained as a gravel road for a little while here in the summer and we'll get it shaped up and then hopefully <coughs> pave it back but that'll be the next impactful thing uh, that'll happen out there on 14 we're going to have a pilot car, some traffic, uh, some flaggers, and traffic control. So the road will be open, but if you got another way to, to get there, use the other way. Um, right now we're, we mill, we're milling up here north of, north of Barnard, those two miles. Where the heck am I here? So there's about a m little over a mile in those two that was covered with gravel, so we're chewing that up. and. Yeah trying to get it laid down and then we're going to go up in that last half mile from five right on the north end of ten there's another gravel covered piece up there we're going to try to get those milled back and then uh, we'll start when we start chip sealing it's going to be up in this this area but we're a couple probably a month out from doing that um, I think that's all the stuff that's coming up Oh, we're working over here getting nine ready to put some gravel in there and we'll have to do a little more reclamation and probably end up, I was going to pave it back, but I think we might try blottering it first and see if that holds and, and see if we can get a couple years out of that and go back and pave it. We'll just kind of see how it goes. Um, that's it. So we're just kind of getting, just starting to get into productive summer stuff. So that's pretty good. So Make a whole get, bunch at your sale? Well, about like always. Okay. Uh, a couple of the mic scraper went pretty good. Our blade went pretty good. Um, but that's the, uh, I, you guys know how I feel about hauling that sh stuff out there and selling it for three bucks and <laughs> and whatnot, but uh, I think we've heard it once. What yeah, about the, the hood? they're still there. <laughs> they're still there. They're, they're still there. They and no, nobody wanted them. So nobody wanted them. But yeah, and I inadvertently bought a couple things. I didn't thought I was buying something else, but it was there only like a dollar, so it wasn't <laughs> so bad. And so no, it, it went okay. Uh, Twenty. The, I think the top number on it will probably be okay because because of that scraper and the and the blade and um, truck boxes went okay a couple of not very good pickups sold a lot better than I would have figured and the semis which a note to self we just we're going to start parting them out and selling them for scrap because we would have made more just hauling it up as scrap than we got um, for the actual semi once they're blown up or you know once they have pretty substantial problems but I don't know it was all right Good. We got less crap laying around, so that's kind of the goal, okay. I guess. All right. Well, that's <coughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, George. Good. Have a great day. Thank you. Yourself. You guys have a... You go to Pierre this week? No. Isn't there a... Am I not thinking right? I was thinking... Trying to get rid of it. Workshop for treasures registered deeds and auditors. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Okay. All right. Just check in. I want you guys missing any training. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Thank you. Next item we have Derek Ritchie discuss personnel from our intern. Morning. Hey, morning. Morning, Derek. Here we go.
pretty late listening today. What? Looking at hiring an intern, and then do you have the? Yeah, I've got HR report already. So we're looking at there's two positions that we've that we've had since the conversion of the the reorg plan, uh, splitting the secret or combining the two secretaries and then using interns. We found one that kind of fits our needs. The second one um, we haven't found the right fit yet. So uh, here they ask for permission to hire the first intern, and then I'll come back once we find somebody that fits the second profile. Each of the interns each year we kind of look for um, a certain project or program. Uh, last two years it was social media. This year it's going to be more on the volunteer side and more on some of the graphic side to develop some sales pieces and things like that. Uh, and then the second intern, we're going to look more for operations, project management, that kind of thing. So, uh, Pres Presley Middlestead uh, is the person that we're going to uh, look to hire today. Uh, we, inter we interviewed five people. Uh, she was the best fit for <coughs> what we were looking at as far as that project. So. College student? Uh, college student, yep, she's back at uh, SDSU. She should be back for the summer. She lives in Groton, so she's familiar with the fair, familiar with the area, uh, so she'll be able to kind of get the ground on. Sounds good. 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 I think we already proved her done. Yeah, she's in the HR. Okay. What's the name? Press, please. Press, please. I've got a copy oh, for you. Press, please. Oh, okay. I'll give you my copy. Okay. If, if, uh, if Press can spell it, I might not be able to do it. It's on the HR report. All right, any questions for you? <laughs> no. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, 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 Have a good week. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so far. Uh, Got to call our agenda items. We have uh, some other items next. Uh, we still have a, a special moment. Never's license for eight <laughs> and roller girls. Um, I would move that and run through it. Second. Move by Kipley. Second by. Sutton to approve the malt beverage for uh, our Yeah, I, my only question is, uh, just uh, not a question, just for your information. It is for three dates, June 9th, June 23rd, and September 8th. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted yep. you to be aware of that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, there was a letter from... Cliff Rhodes uh, on an estate. Um, Insolvent. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Offering 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On a 900 hour. Mm -hmm. I think we almost have to take that. Well, if it's insolvent. I mean, you're not getting at anything. I mean, you might as well take that and call it good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you need a motion? Yeah. I'll move it. Second it. Moved by Hanson, second by Sutton. Yeah, to real quick, Doug, mm -hmm. we, should, we should probably put that on the agenda for next week. I don't think there's a huge hurry, but just to be safe. Oh, oh, yeah, it's it, yeah, it wasn't on the agenda. Oh, oh okay. For next Good week. thing it comes yeah. out. Okay. Do you need? Do we need a motion on it? I think to accept it. I think it's safe. To yeah. Do, do it that okay. Way. Okay. It opens it up. I know. They didn't have precedent. Time to think about it till next week. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the key word there is insolvent. Yeah. Uh, there's a difference between settlement and being in a state that's insolvent. That's but true. I, we can ponder that over the week and discuss it on next yeah. Tuesday. Okay. okay. That's all I have. Gary, do you have anything? Good this week. <laughs> Crazy. That's what? nice of you. <laughs> Gary has nothing and Dirk was quick. This <laughs> well, I'm so with Derek. Everybody's figuring out the flow of this thing, aren't they? <laughs> they? They like the weather. Chris, you have anything for us? No, if, if we don't have to talk gateway and assessment, I, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> I'd make a motion to go into executive session to discuss legal regarding gateway and assessment. I'll second. I have a motion for Sutton and Sutton for Hanson to go into uh, uh, exactly for <laughs> Agline Assessment's legal. We are, in <laughs> we are out of exec. Uh, the only action of exec is that we will put Agline Assessments on the agenda for next Tuesday's meeting for a discussion. 
hopefully by that time we anticipate having a notice back from the Department of Revenue as far as response to our letter. We do not have that letter yet, but we're anticipating it. It's been told it's been mailed, so we should have it. How much time do you want allowed? Uh, that could vary greatly. It depends, I guess. Uh, 20 minutes? Well, At least 15 minutes. 15, I'll put 15 and then it'll be one that's readjusted. It'll be the last item that way. Yeah. Okay. Anything else to come before the commission? Move to adjourn. Okay. Move by Sutton, second by Hans to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. There we go.